I swear, cutting an old man off like that, it's not right. Not right. Wind, shush. Not right at all, I say. Shush. Welcome back to the writer's wardrobe, everyone. For those of you wondering what the bloody hell is going on, episode 16 was the first half of a two-parter interview, and given that this is episode 17, one would have to return to episode 16 to get the first half. Does that make sense? I apologise if I sound condescending, but I'm dealing with a geriatric storyteller who struggles to stay on topic. Now, wind. Wind. Hey, off in your own little world there. Ha <laughs> ha. Back to the dwarf. And don't give me any of that which one garbage. The greasy one in the spoony bit of the catapult. Oh yes, look me dead in the eyes, it is. And you know what he said? What did he say? He said, Pull the lever, old boy. I'm in Ari. Then what happened? Well, you have to understand, the whole thing was a conspiracy. How? Well, just down the river, there were the last few soldiers. I, I can see them clear as day. The young one, uh, casserole. Rizzle? Sausage in a bun, maybe. Anything beats the slop they had us eating. Casserot. Uh, what? His name is Casserot. Casserot, the so-called hero of the last battle. <sighs> Why so-called? Well, it's a conspiracy. Wind? Can we please bring it back to the dwarf? Uh, which one? The one in the f***! Oh, you mean the one that had gotten into the grease barrel? Yes, please. Well, he was just looking at me with that stare they have, you know. Old dwarves, they get this look in their eye when there's violence. Did you pull the lever? Of course I pulled the lever. Because you have no idea the art of storytelling, I tell you. All you do is interrupt and stop me from building suspense. Wind, please focus and tell me what happened after you pulled the lever. Stop. Before you say anything, if you ask me what lever, I will strangle you. Right here. All right, don't rip your britches. What is it you think happens when you fire a catapult? I shot the dwarf, and my goodness, those things can fly. Regardless of their ability to fly, the dragon arced up and snatched him clean out of the air. Oh, my word. Well, that's very lacklustre after two episodes of building to what happened. I never said I was finished. But he got eaten. I never said he got eaten. I said he got snatched out of the air. There's a huge difference between sitting in the mouth and being swallowed. Why is this important? Because of the conspiracy. For goodness sake. Everybody and their mother says Casserole killed the dragon with his javelin. Wait, what? That's what they say. I know they say that. I've never had anyone disagree. Oh, yes. Now for the part I deliberately omitted. The dwarf had a bottle in each hand. In each bottle was an extremely flammable liquid. Might have even been more grease from my barrel. What are you getting at? It was the dwarf that killed the dragon. It wasn't a javelin at all. It looks like he wasn't near greased up enough. He got stuck in his throat. His explosive bottles got half swallowed, though. Blew the bloody thing up from inside. So it wasn't a javelin at all. Interesting. What's strange is that the dwarf survived, crawled out of the open mouth once it hit the ground, wiped himself down, and disappeared into obscurity. But they raised the statue to honor Kasserot. Conspiracy! <sighs> it's not conspiracy, they're just misinformed. Or are they? Huh. Thank you for telling me this, Wind. This is actually very useful information. I'm full of useful information. Have you ever eaten fire ants? Can't say that I have. Or want to, or am interested. Because fire ants can give you- I really don't care. Please tell me never. Thanks for listening, everyone. This has been The Writer's Wardrobe.